What's up YouTube? Welcome back to part 3 of Build Your Own PC series. Uh, this is going to be the final episode in this 3 part series so stay tuned till the end. Now in this video what we are going to do is basically we are going to go and install a SSD inside our system that we had built in our previous video and uh, we're gonna get the system up and running by installing windows drivers and various other programs so let's begin so guys if you have not already subscribed to our channel please go and click that subscribe button as well as that bell icon so that you guys can get notified about our upcoming videos in near future so without any delay, let's begin installing the SSD inside our system. All right, guys, so to connect a SSD, something like this, you would need totally three things. Uh, the first thing is basically the SSD or the hard drive, whatever you are going to install inside your system, the drive itself. Uh, you would need a SATA cable that should be pretty much there inside the motherboard box. Uh, these SATA cables are actually shipped with the motherboard and the third thing that you would require would be a SATA power cable which is going to power the hard drive itself now this is something which is going to be kind of your data cable which is going to transmit all the data or transfer all the data to and fro uh, to and from the drive itself and then you'll have this uh, SATA power connector here that you can see that I've actually taken uh, out from this grommet here inside my case now this cable if you remember we had actually attached to our power supply unit in our last previous video so now what we are going to do is we are going to go and attach this drive to the uh, motherboard or inside the case itself so to do that the first thing that i'm going to do here is basically i'm going to take this uh, wire here and i'm going to go and clip it towards the left side port on the back side of the drive now there's just one way that this uh, wire is going to go so just gently push it and you have your wire connected to your drive now be very gentle with this and the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go and connect the SATA power cable here and uh, depending on where your case uh, is actually providing the slot for installing the drive uh, you'll go and place this drive uh, in most of the cases what I recommend is first placing the drive or first uh, trying to see where your drive is and then try and connect all the wires so I'll just catch you once I'm actually done after uh, connecting the uh, cables that are required to run this drive itself so catch you in a minute so guys as you can see we have already connected our SATA drive right here so there are only two cables that we have attached to this one is the SATA power which is coming out of our power supply unit and the other one is the SATA data cable uh, that has been again one side of it has been uh, plugged into the back side of your drive and the other side has been uh, plugged into the SATA port on your motherboard drive now SATA ports are pretty easy to find on your motherboard if you go and check the manual uh, you should be pretty much uh, able to see where exactly these ports are. I have connected this to port number one, SATA port number one, so you can do that as well. So it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward and uh, more or less our system is now complete. So now it's time to install Windows and do some other tweaking on this new system of ours. So let's begin part two of this video now. So guys, before we start doing anything with our computer, we've got to go and do three things. The first thing that we'll have to do is basically get a copy of the operating system that we would like to install inside our computer. The second thing that you would want to do is basically go and visit your motherboard manufacturer's website and download all the drivers and the latest revision of BIOS for your motherboard from there. Number three that you would want to do is basically go and download the latest version of your uh, graphic card driver. Now to do all these, you will need an access to a computer that's already up and running. So it's pretty easy. So let's just go point by point. The first step is to go and grab yourself a copy of the operating system that you would want to install inside your system. So in our case, we are going to go and install Windows 10. So to, do, uh, to go and get the Windows 10 installation, there are two ways of doing it. Number one is to go to a retail shop or go online and buy a copy of Windows uh, wherein you will be shipped uh, if you buy online uh, with a USB disk that will have the Windows installation files. 
or you can actually manually go to uh, Microsoft's website and download the Windows 10 installer. Now the difference between the two would be if you are going to Microsoft's website, unless you are paying for the key, uh, the installer that you are going to go and download is basically without any key. So you probably are going to be using it for about 90 days before you start seeing something called activate, activate Windows on your home screen or your desktop screen. So that's absolutely fine. At any point of time later on, you can actually go and buy that key and uh, activate your Windows. Now, how to get this Windows, this copy of Windows from Microsoft website? Let's quickly go and check that out. So guys, uh, once you are inside Windows on some other computer, the first thing that you are going to do here is basically prepare a USB drive, at least of 16 GB and uh, you're going to use this drive to go and create yourself a windows boot disk so what you're going to do here is basically go to google.com and search for something called windows media creation tool once you have windows media creation tool uh, the search results look for something which starts with www.microsoft.com go and open this in a new tab and come down and you'll see something like download tool now now download this tool and once you have downloaded the tool, go ahead and open this file. Once you open this file, it's going to take some time. Uh, there would be a few things that would pop up on your screen and just uh, do as uh, what the screen tells you to do. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, insert your USB drive into one of the USB slots on your computer and uh, it's going to actually detect your USB drive and once it detects it, uh, you just have to press next uh, or continue in order for you to actually prepare your installer disk. So it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes. So when this thing is happening in the background, you would also want to do uh, some other things like uh, downloading the various drivers or uh, the BIOS uh, revision, the latest BIOS revision. So now as you can see here, it says what do you want to do? We want to create a new installation media. We're going to go and click create installation media and I'm going to go and press next. So now this is going to ask us uh, if we want English, if we want Windows 10. Well, this is what it is. Uh, you can actually uncheck use the recommended options for this PC. Uh, it actually doesn't matter. Most of the systems are now capable of running a 64-bit operating system. So that should be pretty fine. The next thing you're going to do here is click next and then you're going to select USB flash drive. Now, once you select this, press next and uh, now you're going to go and uh, insert your flash drive. So, all right. So now, as you can see, um, our drive is selected. I'm going to press next and then it's going to uh, kind of do whatever it has to do it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes depending upon your internet speed and then it's going to create uh, your uh, uh, installation disk uh, so once you have done that uh, go ahead and close this so because i already have my installation installer disk here i'm not going to go and repeat this whole thing so once you have downloaded all these things now it's time for us to go and uh, start our new system and start installing whatever we wanted to do so let's just come back to our old system or the new system that we had built and start installing our stuffs there so guys the first thing that you will want to do is basically go and switch on your computer and enter your bios in my case it entered the bios all by itself directly i didn't have to do anything but in your case you might want to go and uh, press delete or F1 depending upon the motherboard that you have. So the first thing I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to go and uh, update my BIOS. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and press M flash. Now before I press M flash on my motherboard here, I'll have to go and insert the USB where I had downloaded the BIOS file from the manufacturer's website. So once I have that file onto my on my USB drive, I'm go and I'm going to go and press M flash. I'm going to press yes. And now it's going to go and uh, kind of uh, update the BIOS. So as you can see, I have my BIOS file here. I'm going to go and select this 
and I'm going to run this. So my BIOS is going to be updated now. It's going to take some time. So make sure that you don't switch off your computer. Make sure uh, you have constant power supply going. Uh, don't press anything. Wait for about five to 10 minutes and everything is going to be perfectly fine. So we just have to wait and see how things go. So guys, once you have updated your BIOS, uh, I mean, it would, your system would restart and everything would be set to factory defaults. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to take my USB drive and under boot priority, I'm going to get it to number one because mm -hmm. I want my system to boot from my USB drive for the first time as it does not have windows. So once I've done this, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and take my USB drive uh, which was our Windows installer disk and I'm going to go and install it or I'm going to go and insert it inside one of the USB ports on my computer and I'm going to go and restart my system. So once you have, uh, once you restart your system, your computer should pretty much boot directly from your USB drive. So let's go ahead and do that. So once your system boots up, it should pretty much uh, boot directly from your USB drive. Now, if you see some screen which kind of looks pretty crazy or weird, doesn't mind, doesn't matter. Just wait for some time until you see the Windows logo. So now, as you can see, we have the Windows logo. That means it's actually booting from our drive. So we'll have to just wait and see. All right. So as we can see, we have English United States, United States. That's what we want. That's absolutely correct. Uh, we want to go next. Uh, we want to install our windows and it's going to take some time now because uh, I don't have a product key with me right now. Uh, I'm just actually going to go and skip this and I'm going to go and activate my windows later. So I'm going to press. I don't have a product key. Now it's going to ask me what version of windows do i want now the most commonly used window the version of windows that uh, is being used is basically a windows 10 home and windows 10 pro or windows 10 professional now i'm going to use windows 10 home here so i'm going to go and click next once i click next i accept the term uh, accept the license term install windows only now there's just one drive as you can see here the other drive i just unplugged so that there is no confusion whatsoever so i'm going to go and select this drive and i'm going to go and select next and now windows is going to do everything uh, that it's supposed to do it's going to copy all the files onto your hard drive it's going to do installation and everything so i'll see you once our windows installation is over so guys as you can see our uh, windows installation is more or less ready the first stage has been crossed it's getting some things ready for it to begin so you've got to wait patiently and let's see where it reaches next all right so now our system has restarted again and it's going to perform a few things now so let's just quickly go and see what it's going to do so i'm going to take you step by step so that you don't uh, mess up anything so let's start with the region uh, now I'm in India so I'm going to go and select India from this uh, table if you are in some other country go and select that so after you select India press yes uh, yes US is the correct keyboard layout for me uh, no I don't want to add any other uh, as of now uh, don't even if you have internet do not connect your internet to your computer and press I don't have internet now these are the things which you actually don't want to go ahead with so I'm going to go and say continue with limited setup and uh, whoever is going to use the species so let's say king daddy mm, or maybe let's just say king daddy yeah that should be fine and i'm not going to set any password for this computer as of now now these are the things which i think is more or less like a block or spam i really don't want all these things to be enabled so i've disabled everything i'm going to go and accept this uh i'm gonna press no here 
uh, I don't want to act, uh, you know, kind of use Cortana. If you want to use Cortana, you can press accept, but I don't want to use Cortana, so I'm going to say not now. So now my system is again going to take a couple of minutes before it actually gets inside the windows. So if you are here guys, more or less, it's okay. Now in case you, when your system restarted again, it's going to, you know, kind of that installation mode where you have to select the country name uh, or, or sorry, the windows version, or it's again booting from the USB drive. What you've got to do is uh, take the USB drive out enter your BIOS and go and reset all the settings. So once you do that, your computer again is going to by default know that there is windows inside this and I've got to boot from that. So it's going to go and directly detect your hard drive and it's going to boot from there. So it's pretty simple, nothing to worry. If you keep on kind of getting into that loop wherein your computer takes you back to the USB drive or it takes you back to that step, from where you have to install windows from the usb drive it's it's not a big deal so yes you don't need to worry about it so let's see how much time does this take so once we are inside windows i'll catch you back again all right so now we are inside windows perfect so as you can see uh, we have everything nice and clean here so the first thing that I'm going to do here now is basically go and install my graphic card driver. So I hope guys you have already installed it. Now at this point of time you can actually go and connect your computer to the internet. So uh, I don't have an internet cable but fortunately I have already downloaded all the drivers that I wanted. So if you are using a NVIDIA card you want to go ahead and download something called GeForce Experience. And if you are on AMD or you have an AMD graphic card, you want to go and download Adrenaline from AMD website or for the NVIDIA case, uh, for the GeForce, uh, GeForce experience, you can go and download it from the NVIDIA website. So this is the first thing that you would want to do. So let's just quickly go and install our uh, graphic card driver. So guys, as you can see, I have all these files that I want to install here. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to go and install the AMD uh, chipset driver. I just had mentioned that I'm going to install the graphics driver, but I think I want to first go ahead and install all the basic chipset drivers that are there. So I'm just quickly going to go and install. Now, if you see something like this, uh, this is something which is going to be very common if you don't want this thing to appear uh, just press on chain when these notifications appear go ahead and uh, put it to never notify press ok yes and that's it so next time when you click this it's directly going to go inside the installer program so it's going to take some time uh, we have to be pretty patient with this so once this is done, uh, we are going to go and install our graphic card driver. So as you can see here, uh, now because this is the AMD, AMD chipset, uh, there are a few things which I want. There are a few things which I do not want. So AMD Ryzen power plan, okay, I can go ahead with this. AMD GPIO driver, you can actually select this. You are free not to. AMD PSP driver, again, it's up to you if you want this or not. So I'm just going to do this, I'm just going to leave it as it is and I'm going to go ahead and install this. So this is going to take some time, probably about three to five minutes and then everything should be absolutely fine and my system probably is going to go and restart. So if you must have seen there was a screen tear and uh, this is mainly because we don't have a graphics uh, driver installed. So once we have the graphic card driver installed, all these problems are going to go away. So guys, as you can see, uh, this has finished installing. I, uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to go and restart our system. So once we uh, restart and once we come back into Windows, I'll catch you again. So guys, now that we have uh, booted back into Windows, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to go to my computer. Now, as you can see, we can't find my computer here. So for that, right click on your screen, go to personalize, go to themes, come down, and you'll have this uh, something called desktop icon settings go on the top and click on computer i also want control panel to be on my desktop so i'm going to click them i'm going to go and apply okay 
and there you go we have uh, my computer on the screen so now again I'm going to go into my pen drive where I had uh, installed everything so yes now is the time when I'm going to go and install my graphic card driver so I have already downloaded this uh, I'm going to go and press install it's pretty much uh, I mean like it's very simple it, this is what it is I mean like when you download this you just have to click and follow all the instructions that are there so I'm going to just quickly go and install my uh, graphic card driver and once I've restarted my system I'll catch you back again guys so guys now that we are uh, again inside BIOS there's one more thing that we have to do and that is basically going and enabling our XMP profile now as you can see here our DDR speed or our RAM speed is set to 2133 megahertz by default and our uh, RAM speed is clocked at 3200 megahertz so we need that speed and for that we need to go and enable our XMP profile so as you can see here it's written a XMP profile one I'm going to go and click that I'm going to go to settings I'm going to go save and exit and then I'm going to come back to BIOS again and show you that this has been changed to 3200 megahertz. So guys now as you can see our RAM speed has been changed to 3200 megahertz. So this way we have actually optimized our RAM or we have increased the speed of our RAM to perform at a higher speed. So after this now as we had just uh, installed our windows now it's gonna reboot back to windows and we will work it from there now guys uh, now that we are inside windows uh, what we are going to do is we are going to optimize our system or optimize our windows to run at a better performance so the first thing that we are going to do here is basically we are going to come down uh, to power and sleep settings uh, what we are going to do here is the screen we are going to set it to never uh, when plugged in we don't want it to be closed uh, you could leave this uh, if you don't want your system to go off to sleep I usually don't like that so I am putting it to never uh, for performance and energy we are gonna go and make it to the best performance level here after this we are going to go to additional power settings and uh, where is this all right let me just pull it to my other screen all right so as we can see here we can see something called amd ryzen balance and then we have uh, high performance here or we also have the amd high performance here so what we're going to do is amd ryzen high performance that's what i'm going to select here and that's it that's pretty much what we have to do so our system would run better uh, as compared to what we had just right now before enabling this so more or less this is how you are going to optimize your system and uh, basically there are two or three things that you have to optimize the first thing that you have to optimize here is basically your ram that you do by going into the bios the next thing you do is basically optimizing your windows to perform better and uh, yeah this is pretty much it and besides this probably you might want to go and have some uh, third party software like hardware info 64 in order to monitor uh, your hardware in terms of its power uh, wattage i mean like how much power is it drawing or maybe you can also go and check with that what temperatures are you running so there's so many things that you can monitor using that software so i highly recommend that links to that would be given uh, in the description down below besides this i also recommend you guys going and downloading something called vc plus plus redistributables uh, from tech power up website i'm also going to go and uh, put that description uh, put that link in the description down below so that you guys can go and download that as well it's pretty important uh, a lot of your programs are going to use them so if you have that pre-installed uh, nothing like that so these are the main things that you would require uh, when you have actually installed your system uh, with a newer version of windows or you have just built your pc you have just installed windows you have just finished installing your drivers and everything and that's how your system is going to perform at its peak potential so guys with this we come to the end of the video i hope you enjoyed the whole build series and if you like the video press that like button share with your friends 
and if you have not subscribed to our channel please go ahead and subscribe to our channel press that bell icon so that you get notified for our future videos so yep guys this is it for this time and uh, we hope to see you again soon with another video until next time it's Sajeev signing off stay happy stay healthy stay blessed bye bye